Welcome to another awesome video. Let's start out this video by blasting some Yacht Rock. No! Just kidding about the Yacht Rock. This is a small wooden box that controls my Yamaha receiver, an Arillic device, and a smart plug, all with a little computer that cost me only $15. In past videos, we've shown ways to control our outdoor audio system with various phone apps, but this time we built a box with five physical buttons. Why does it have no labels? Uh, this is still a work in progress. I gotta go get some labels for my label maker. The whole point of doing this is if you don't have your phone nearby and you're outside, you can still control basic functions of the audio system. The only buttons I really need to control this are volume up and down, power, mode, cycling through various playlists, etc. And then of course there's this weird button over here which activates this blinding light. Why do we need that? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Another interesting thing about this little $15 computer is it has a two line OLED display, which I can use to display system status or title an artist of what's currently playing, or in this case, just shamelessly promote my YouTube channel. It'll even stay in sync with the changes you make on your phone, showing the current status and title artist information. This was a fun little weekend project that involved hardware, coding, and software and let's go into the details of how we did it. The brains of this operation is something called an ESP8266 microcontroller. This is a fairly inexpensive chip that includes Wi-Fi and can run your own scripts. It's a custom DIY gadget, sort of like a Raspberry Pi, but even more stripped down. Since it doesn't have an operating system, it just runs the script you load. You hook it up to Windows with the USB cable and load your script using the Arduino development environment. I never used this before, and this was my first project. The code is C, but it's very easy. There are lots of well-documented libraries and it's easy to load and test. And with the exception of the smart outlet, the code is very high level. As a matter of fact, since there's no OS, like on a Raspberry Pi, the boot time on this thing when you load a new set of code is fast. Just a few seconds to reboot and get connected to your Wi-Fi network. It was pretty easy to code in this environment, despite uh, never having done so before. And there's lots of good online help. And it was basically just sending different, different commands to different devices. I just had to detect whether or not a button pin was pressed and then send a post request with XML to the stereo receiver or a get request to the Arillic or, or whatever I needed to do. And here's a shot of the debug window, which lets you just uh, print out some informational messages as you're using the code while it's hooked up to the USB port. Hardware configuration for this project was very simple. Just use the standard pull up resistor method as documented online. Wired those resistors in using some sort of standard Raspberry Pi cables. I got a, the five switches as a group from amazon.com. And here's what the thing looks like when you take it off the wall. It's just wired point to point on the back. Very simple. Uh, it runs on five volts over the micro USB cable. So I just got a micro USB cable and extended that over a speaker wire. So it's always has power. The wooden case shown here was not my first choice for a case. I initially started out with this plastic box with a clear lid so I wouldn't have to cut a hole for the very small display. However, unfortunately, during the process of drilling, I actually cracked the plastic. I really picked switches that were too big. So I had to sort of abandon that box. But in the end, the little wood thing I used actually was better because it's a little bit sleeker and uh, doesn't stick out from the wall as much. I may eventually, you know, move on to a different case because it, it is still a little less uh, waterproof. However, the switches are waterproof and I've got plexiglass uh, glued in front of the display so it should remain fairly well protected outside. One final thing I wanted to talk about in this project is the TP-Link CASA Smart Outlet. Why do I need Smart Outlet integration in this project? I'm sending commands to an Arillic. I'm sending commands to a Yamaha receiver. This is going to be for an extra set of speakers connected to an amplifier that I'm going to put out in the yard. So basically I can punch a button and activate or deactivate additional speakers, which will be connected to the tape output jacks. This device was very affordable and I got two of them. So I'm going to use one for Christmas lights or something, but it integrates with Google and has an API very much like the Shelly Relay we showed in a previous video. However, it was not as easy to integrate as the Shelly Relay because its local API requires you to send some sort of hexadecimal codes, whereas the Shelly Relay or the other devices use more plain text type commands. But either way, uh, there, there's plenty of help for it online. Well, anyway, that about wraps up this video. Um, as always, thank you for watching and supporting us with any sort of interaction, such as a like, dislike, comment, whatever, subscription, all the usual YouTube stuff. 
it all helps, you know, as we're on a shoestring budget. But uh, until then, we'll see you with a tape deck or something next time. See you next time for another awesome video. Bye. Yeah, it worked.